Good afternoon, everyone. Today I have with me Brad Buttrick of Hidden Harvest Grow Lighting. And as we move forward, we need to really start talking about solutions for the problem. You see the delayed planting going on right now in our fields across the northern hemisphere. This is a solution that we can use. Brad developed this all-in-one spectrum light as he was working at Sunshine Systems. Each panel only draws 36 watts, which means it's easily implementable if you have even the smallest of solar panels. And this full spectrum light will take you through seeding, sprouting, flowering, and fruiting of the plants. I feel this grow light system is something new and something innovative. So for those of you out there looking for solutions on how to grow, how to do indoor farming, how to grow microgreens, how to set up an indoor facility, vertical indoor facility, this will be part one of a four part series that we're doing together. And I really hope that this helps you make decisions to at least prepare and think about the way you're going to need to grow your own food moving forward into the intensifying grand solar minimum. I did want to touch on the fake news here for a moment. I don't know if you've seen, but Facebook has labeled every single article. 100% of articles coming out of Breitbart News as fake news. So if anybody's reposting a Breitbart article, there's a little box that is now suddenly popping up that says you might want to check this first. It's a it's its own set of little gray oval boxes that comes up to say learn more about this channel. And when you open it, it comes to the Wikipedia page that says uh, it's known to have all misleading stories. It's 100 percent misleading fake news, misleading story site through the Wikipedia post LinkedIn. So every Breitbart article coming out now. You know, this whole narrative goes directly into the grand solar minimum. So the more information that's trying to come out about these weather changes and the political changes with the weather, you got to realize they're not going to go quietly into the night and we're not going to all hold hands and sing kumbaya and, you know, hold each other and hug and, you know, have campfires and drum circles. That ain't going to work. They're going to try to distract you until the very end. Because right. the, the society needs to keep some sort of coherence as we move forward, and they're just not going to let it fall apart before the events happen. Now, come up with a synopsis of timelines moving forward based on, A, historical documents. It's not just about the weather that we see right now and the satellite record that we get right now. It's all about looking into the past, historical written documentation, and then going further back in time and finding these same cycles finding what happened in those societies, and then going, all right, it's happening again. What could we expect? But there's 8 billion people on the planet versus just less than a billion last time or 1 billion last time. So sure. as we move forward, the distraction in the media is going to get so incredibly heavy. Sure. And along with that's going to come food sh shortages. You know, the, light, the lights have been gone for a little bit. Uh, I hadn't really decided to bring them back until about a year ago. Um, did some investigation and realized, you know, my wife and I are both, uh, quote unquote, we, we like to prep. We like to be uh, prep for life, I guess would be the best way to say it. We're not scared of the unknown. We just want to make sure that we've got wood, wood stove, food storage and all those things. Uh, but the real the real dilemma is, is how are you going to get fresh food if the if just in time is, is, uh, is no longer or food shortages? You got to be able to grow your own food. I mean, and let's not even talk about the grand solar minimum. Just in general, it makes sense to grow your own food, where all of our food is coming from, what seventy percent from other places around the world. Uh, it just makes more sense to have it in your backyard or in your basement or in your closet, growing, where you don't have to worry about going to the store to keep your family or yourself healthy. And it can be done super easily in with solar, with this lighting system, which is really great. Yeah, so what kind of timeline would you be looking at with your lights to be growing from seed after you soak the seeds for, you know, 24 to 48 hours and then you lay them out in the trays? Uh, what kind of timeline are you looking at there from sprouts into something edible? Right now I'm trying to concentrate and I want to do a quick shout out for a guy as far as microgreens go. It's called the Garage Greenhouse. It's a very small channel, but this guy is a pro microgreen grower. Um, I asked permission if uh, I could drop his name today. He's amazing. And what I'm going to do is I'm a, a grower by proxy because of the lighting, but I wouldn't call myself a professional grower. 
I just know what I know because of the lighting. So I'm not an expert in all the different fields of growing. But what I do know is I'm seeking out nutritional food that can be stacked in the basement, grown with a high turnover rate, such as microgreens, wheat grasses. Basically, what I'm doing right now, it takes about three months to get this garden up to speed where I'm getting pr production out of it. So what I'm doing now is I'm setting everything in place for a larger garden in a month and a half that will have self-sustaining, perpetual tomatoes, peas, chard, mustard greens. I mean, I got so many things coming. I'm going to be uh, touching on perennial vegetables, Egyptian walking onions, stuff like that. They can all be grown inside very easily as long as you have an ability to turn the lights on and it can be done easily with solar. Yeah, I'm taking a look at some of these superfoods. You just mentioned wheat grass. Uh, I've been having some good luck with goji berry sprouts as well. You know, gojis, you can go down to your local supermarket. They're the little red berries. They're, they're known as a longevity herb anyway. They're incredibly easy to grow. And you know, I've been experimenting. I have two balconies out here, and we have about 150 pots out there now. It's really more difficult to grow on a balcony than it is out in the open soil, believe it or not, because everything's contained, and you have to bring it up and really look after it. But these goji berries, a longevity food, superfood. But if you plant the whole seed, uh, if you, a berry inside has about 20 seeds. If you take the berry and just plant it, all those 20 sprouts or seedlings come out in that same exact area. But the superfoods is where we're going to need to go because the lack of nutrition is one thing that keeps again and again and again and again and again popping up through all the written accounts of the Grand Solar Minimums. And let's talk about Grand Solar Minimums for a moment. We have the Dalton Minimum. And uh, Brad, you had alluded to the year without a summer up in New England there. So that's one. And then we had the Maunder Minimum. And now there's a lot of writings coming out saying Columbus was actually looking for new grow lands. Let me go back into the 1400s, Spore Minimum. Uh, Salsha Dobler does an amazing bit of work with his abrupturthchanges.com. He has a full PDF there talking about what happened in the spore minimum 1400s and the European accounts translated from several languages into English. But then at the same time, we find the voyages of Zhenghua over in China sent out to look for new grow lands because they were coming into a new grand solar minimum. <clears throat> we come back to the late antique little ice age, circa 535, Japan wiped out. All the uh, Incan empires wiped out. All, so that was a planetary uh, event. And then we come back into 79 AD. They don't even have a name for that one. It's just the Roman, I guess. What do you say? Minimum. Then we come back into 400 BC approximately, and you have another one. Whatever they get for written accounts coming out of this, the number one thing they're always talking about, crops being lost and malnutrition. And when the malnutrition comes, everybody gets sicker easier. So we're going to need to keep our bodies healthier. So talking about superfoods, so you got wheatgrass, possibly goji berries. I'm a fan of Moringa oleifera also. It's got to have warm climate to grow that. But any other things that you could think of that are easy to grow for superfoods that can keep our body packed full of nutrients during this time? Oh, sure. I mean, there's, there's a bunch of different varieties that can be grown under the lights. It's just a matter of how much room the individual has to grow and how big a garden they want and what kind of foods they want to grow. Um, I know the wheatgrass, um, Ann Wigamore was the kind of like, like the one that brought wheatgrass to the forefront, I think back in the late 70s. And I believe that the uh, Hippocrates Center down in Florida is based all around her wheatgrass healing properties and the, you know, her, her, her discovery of it and working with it. Um, and I believe the Essenes uh, um, also ate uh, grasses as well, watering grasses. Um, so it, it's considered a blood transfusion for most people. You know, it's high in vitamin C. I just think it's a sustainable juice and it's going to give you what you need if you don't have anything else. I mean, it's going to be very difficult for people when they can't feed their children and you don't have quality foods to eat. And you, if you can grow in your basement or in your garage or in a closet, at least you can supplement your food storage if you're prepared already. Right. And it's kind of fun growing the microgreens anyway and actually growing anything. Because those plants, you go out there, you check them every day, you know, they're up a little bit. And then if your friends come by after another week, they're like, oh, my gosh, look how much it came up. But the microgreens, sure. you know, they come out to a full pot within a week and people are just stunned, absolutely stunned if they're not growers, how quickly everything moves. It's true. The other thing I'd like to study and specialize a little bit more in as far as the growing and I'll start offering more is on uh, the channel is medicinal herbs that are really important that I can grow in the garden and just keep sustaining with the grow lights on and on and on. Cooking herbs, 
medicinal herbs, whatever, you know, basils, holy basil, uh, ignatia, any of those things could all be grown. Working on a schedule and getting the, the perpetual harvest planted, I just ordered another 300 pots. So there's going to be a bunch of different things going in. This is part one of four. I'm going to continue with the next episode next week where we get much deeper into the changes on our sun affecting agriculture on our planet. You can find all the links below in the description box, including links to Hidden Harvest YouTube channel with the video grow series, watching the progress of indoor farming, which you can do yourself.